Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. Lots of conservatives, libertarians, and other supporters of small government tend to get hung up on the question of the military in regard to why they can't support anarcho-capitalism. I mean, this is great! If they are this far, then they should understand already that the government is incompetent to providing goods and services, it distorts the economy, throws non-violent people in cages, government schools indoctrinate their children, and that the state itself is fundamentally immoral, a violent institution, the very justification for its existence being an argument for its own demise. How could an organization that violates property rights possibly protect property rights? But the question that they bring up is, how would an anarcho-capitalist society protect itself? Would it be any better than a state? To answer that question directly, yes. Society is far safer if it chooses to defend itself voluntarily, rather than place their safety in the hands of a coercive monopoly. But how, you might ask? Well, let's start from the top. We should also deconstruct the idea that the state needs a military at all. After all, what is the military-industrial complex protecting us from? ISIS? That wouldn't exist but for status military aggression. The Korean War? The American Civil War or both world wars? The Vietnam War? Name the war that needed to be fought in US history, and responses to state aggression don't count, as they make my point about the state. Go on. Oh wait. Hmm. It's almost as if the world will be safer without coercive monopolies controlling the world's militaries. But that would be silly. To say nothing of their incompetence, the F-35 fighter plane program is projected to cost 1.5 trillion in stolen money. Trillion. If you were given a million dollars every day since the birth of Jesus Christ by 2018, you'd only be just reaching half the cost of this military boondoggle. To say nothing of how the Pentagon just lost 6.5 trillion dollars. They just misplaced it. As the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If we can prevent a war from starting in the first place, then questions about the army are moot. An anarcho-capitalist society will be a society that applies a non-aggression principle consistently. They won't be looking for conflict. They'll be looking to trade, an exchange of goods across borders that benefits both parties. They'll be incentivized to de-escalate foreign relations and come to deals that benefit everyone. Now, foreign policy can be confusing, and things that a lot of people do don't always make a whole lot of sense. But I can guarantee you that most foreign leaders don't act randomly. They aren't Emperor Caligula declaring war against the Atlantic Ocean and claiming victory when they bring some seashells back to Rome. Why would they not attack a capitalist society? Well, why would they? It's not in their interest to do so, any more than it's in your interest to attack a grocery store employee. If goods aren't crossing borders, soldiers will. Anarcho-capitalists want trade that benefits everybody. Given that potentially hostile states benefit from trade as well, why would they want to attack in the first place? It makes no sense. Now, why can we trust foreign powers to hold up their end of the agreement? Because, again, it will be in their interest to do so. Geez, pay attention. And because we're their best trading partners, it will be also in other countries' interests to come to the aid of the anarcho-capitalists if they come under attack. Speaking of, what does happen if there's a state that wants to invade, despite all incentives and diplomacy? How would a voluntary society defend itself? Simple, private defense agencies. In a nutshell, defense agencies are competing private militaries subject to the forces of supply, demand, and the whims of the market. Now, who pays for these defense agencies absent stolen money? You think the military is important, right? Other people think the military is important too, don't they? After all, they keep voting for the military increases in the United States. If people think it's important, they'll pay for it. What's wrong? You don't think you can make the case about why people should pay for the military voluntarily? That says more about you than it does private militaries. Not satisfied with that answer? Well, it's businesses who will pay for it, probably. They have the most to lose from foreign invasion. Why wouldn't they pay, I don't know, $15 a month to keep a deterrent towards predatory foreign powers up? Hell, why can't they own an anti-missile battery to shoot down that ICBM that Al-Qaeda just launched at them? But let's say we have a state invading the country. If there is a clear, present, and obvious threat, the demand for private defense agencies will skyrocket. 
Unburdened by a coercive monopoly, technology and manufacturing sectors will produce the most advanced weaponry the world has ever seen. Defense agencies will be able to buy these weapons at a fraction of the cost of the invading state. The strategies that they would come up with, free from political concerns, would be towards ending the conflict as quickly and cost-efficiently as possible. Such strategies might include offering refuge for the poor soldiers being used as pawns by their state, or broadcasting the desire for peace to the enemy state civilians via social media, radio, or pamphlets. Because it's in their mutual best interest to do so, defense agencies have an incentive to cooperate with one another against the aggressor, while also competing with each other to accomplish the greatest number of defensive objectives at the lowest cost. The result is a decentralized military structure that is more versatile, more mobile, and fields superior equipment to the invading state. If all else fails, well, given that these agencies will have the best weapons and use the best tactics, I cannot say how specifically such a confrontation will go, but I imagine it'll go something like this. BOOM! Now let's be realistic here. A network of private defense forces does not make society completely invulnerable to conquest from larger, more powerful armies. All I'm saying is that a voluntary and narco-capitalist society will put up a much better fight than if they put their security on the shoulders of a coercive monopoly. So, how would a voluntary society defend itself better than a state ever could?